Critics of the export controls exactly what Anna has said. Say deep seeks proven them right. Silicon Valley relies on the powerful NVIDIA H100 chip for AI. China's not allowed to import them. Now, without access, DeepSeek was forced to innovate. The company says its chatbot was trained on NVIDIA's H800 chips. They were designed to comply with US export controls put in place a few years ago. In short, DeepSeek says it's done more with less. Lewis Turnstall is a senior research scientist at Hugging Face. The company develops tools that help build AI and has been leading the team reproducing the model. So, come on, sir, have they done it? So they've definitely closed the gap between open source and closed source. Um, OpenAI have a model called O1, which is uh, one of the best models in the world. And DeepSeek have created an open weight version of this that anyone can download and use in their um, computers. Did they do it for six million and without any more powerful chips than the ones that they say they used? So I think the cost is probably overblown. So in general, when you train these models, you have to do many experiments. And so in the path to training your final model, it's possible that the final training run is $5 million. But I expect they spent a lot more in getting to that point. And an analogy would be like if I'm an author writing a book, perhaps I write my final draft in one day, but I had to do many drafts to get to that point. And I expect it was something similar like that for DeepSeek. So I asked chat... Uh, GPT, I asked Chuck, what do you make of DeepSeek? And what are its advantages over you? And it said it has more real-time data. It said it had this, that, and the other APIs, blah, blah, blah. But then it said, ah, but Chat said, I am better at being conversational and better at being interactive. Is that your judgment? Um, I think it's pretty subjective, right? Because what we think of more conversational depends on the, the person's tastes. Um, I think what DeepSeek does is it definitely has a different character um, to ChatGPT. Um, I think primarily ChatGPT has been trained to kind of encode Western values, whereas DeepSeek certainly seems to have, you know, a more of a bias towards, say, Chinese values. And I think that's like the interesting thing of having different models in the world. The, the ability, I mean, obviously the big concern is that the valuations of the Western companies can't be justified if they're spending that much more money uh, than, than, than the others and not necessarily building a better mousetrap, just building a different one. I mean, if, 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 there's, if it costs that much more, then you are looking at an investor market that says something's wrong here. Yeah, so I, I think the reaction from the stock markets is probably overblown. Um, right. What's important... What's important to note here is that there's kind of two axes that we have as model builders uh, to kind of train models. So on the one hand, we can scale them up, we can train them to be bigger, we can use more data, more compute. And this is a, a sort of known path to improving the capabilities of models. But the big breakthrough that happened uh, from OpenAI last year was to show that actually, if you train the models to think longer on hard problems, you can actually get similar, similar gains in performance. And so I think what we're likely going to see is actually an increase in the demand for compute because what the DeepSeek model shows is that if you have access to one of these reasoning models, there's a whole range of use cases that are suddenly available. This morning, when I was looking at the market reaction, and let's face it, the market is always going to swing the pendulum way too far one way or t'other. But this morning, what I thought of from NVIDIA's point of view is talk of my death is greatly exaggerated. This is very early on. I mean, you know, the, there's lots of people who just want to jump up and down and say, oh, it's all over, panic, rush. But it's not that, is it? It's much more complicated than that. Yeah, indeed. And, and just to give you some context, so DeepSeek released their model on the Hugging Face platform, and immediately the open source community started tinkering with it, both trying to understand what it can do, but also to kind of adjust it to its own applications. And so we've had over 3 million downloads in the last few days. And in order to run these models, you need GPUs, you need compute, and you need hardware. And so the demand for things like NVIDIA, I think, is only going to increase because all these people now have access to this model. Can I just quickly ask you on that, this idea of this open software business um, mm -hmm. and the criticisms of chat and others who haven't and sort of meta that has, uh, this idea of open software, how significant is it? 
In my opinion, I think it's the most important path forward in order to foster innovation in the ecosystem. Because if you don't have access to open models and open data sets, you really have no idea what goes into these systems. They're effectively pure black boxes. And so if I'm a developer or a company that wants to understand deeply you know, how my systems work, it's really important to have access to these. And the other side of it is that in some sense, it's really democratizing the right. accessibility of AI. And I think that's the really exciting part of this whole um, ecosystem. We'll talk more, sir. We're going to need your help. I promise you this in the days, weeks, and months ahead. So uh, looking forward to having you on Quest Business uh, some more. Thank you, sir.